Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another investigation and I'm back in Duncton looking at the pastimes and the, the pleasures of this rural community here in West Sussex. And I'm very excited because I'm now joined by John Robbins, who, if you've been watching the series, we've met before. Hello, John. Hello, Richard. Nice to see you yeah, again. Yeah, likewise, yes. We are standing in a lovely field by the village hall, but um, it's got a bit of a chequered history, hasn't it? Well, yes, it has. Yes, it has. I mean, it's it's been used by the village for sports purposes for generations, I right. guess. It was originally part of the Courthold Estate, the Burton Park Estate, and it was um, and it was when the with the estate was sold, it was then it was then transferred over to the uh, to the to the parish council um, to the well, it was the Burton Park trustees, and then eventually it was transferred to the parish council, who now take responsibility for it. Um, but it, certainly there are two main games that were played here certainly in my time stool ball and cricket there was a little football played on what's now the croquet field which you've already yes. had a look at i believe that's right um, but certainly predominantly it's been stool ball and cricket the cricket ceased being to be played here um before the stool ball i think the stool ball went on until somewhere around 1980 um, cricket was played here, the original village Burton Park Cricket Club, I think packed up in the mid-60s. Um, and then there was a, one of the local builders had a works team here, which went on possibly for another five years, something like that. But after that, no cricket was played here, or only on a very ad hoc basis. You have um, a famous personality in the cricket world, James Dean, which is on the Cricketers Pub. Yeah. But am I right in thinking that he never played cricket here? Yeah, you are right in thinking yeah. that. Yes, at one time, and I remember my grandfather talking about it, they used to have a, they used to have a, an impromptu cricket field down elsewhere in 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 the Burton Park estate. Oh, I, see. I think near down to the rear of the main house by the lake somewhere. I think I don't know exactly where, but I've got a rough idea. Right. Hmm. Now I'm interested in stool ball because it's um, a game that is still being played, but it's not obviously as well known as cricket. Cricket, we mm. have lords and we have all the test mm. matches and this, that, and the other. And I know you've you've let me take some photographs of photographs that you have of your family playing stool ball back in 1923, something mm -hmm. like that. Yes, that's right. I mean, it's it's, it's fascinating that uh, the game that has been played here for so so long, um, that, and that you've got pictures of your relations to it. Um, is it a complicated game? No, no, it's not. the The rules basically are the same as cricket, but the but the actual the actual wickets and the bat and the ball are different the the wicket is a thing a bit like a a bit like a small road sign right uh, one at either end obviously um and then the bat is a is a round heavy wooden bat um probably about 10 inches across on a short handle um and the ball is a hard ball like a small version of a cricket ball and white um and I understand it's a very ancient game, but I understand it increased in popularity during and after the Great War because it was something in addition to being a ladies game, um, it was it was possible for disabled ex-servicemen to play who oh, were not able to play cricket or football or any of the or, or any of the other games like that, maybe because they'd lost a limb. Ah, I see. And it, it, I mean, it strikes me as a game that's actually. Uh, quite dangerous because the the wicket is up here somewhere. It's sort of head height, so the ball is actually hey, you know, instead of trying to hit the wick the uh, the wicket down below, it seems that it's uh, even <laughs> well I, dangerous. I think you might be right. The uh, the the ball is not uh, is not as heavy and not as large as a cricket ball. No, um, and also it's bowled underarm, so there's some oh, limit so, to so the power. Yes. To, yes. So it's lobbed. It's not going at ninety yeah. miles an exactly. hour. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, it would yeah, if it hit someone in the face, yes. or particularly if they wore glasses, it would be nasty. Yes, but, uh, but it certainly keeps you on your toes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a huge thing in my family's my life. My grandmother was captain of the team for, I think, about 50 years, and she played until she was, I suppose, in her mid-60s. 
Um, and then she continued to play like after that sometimes with a runner because she couldn't run anymore but cause you could hear still hit the ball and oh, she was right. only a tiny little lady less than five feet high but she was good at it yes. and it was very popular in the village uh, that's uh, I think that's just so lovely that she was able to still take the batting yeah but she would send somebody else more sprightly to yeah, do the exactly. runs I think yeah. that's excellent hmm. oh is it still it's not still played They're not played here but there are some of the they're not there are not as many teams as there used to be, but the local villages, I know Tillington have got a team, Grafham oh, right. have got one, West Dean have got one, and it, but it seems almost exclusively now to be a game of Surrey, uh, sorry, of Sussex and Ham, so, well, Sussex really, Sussex a bit in Surrey and a little right. bit into Hampshire. Oh, well, we must cling maybe on to Maybe a little it. bit into Kent, I don't know. Yes, mm. so a real south, mm. southern, a southern game. Yeah, it yeah. seems to be. Why? I haven't got a clue. No. <laughs> well, there we are. So this is uh, hollowed, uh, hallowed rather, sports ground. I suppose ground. it is yeah. really, yeah. yeah. John, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very well, much indeed. Okay, thank you, Richard. Take nice care. to see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm very excited to be joined by Peter Thomas. Hello, Peter. Hello. And uh, now, can you tell me what your role is in the community, shall we say? I'm uh, the leader of the parish council. Right, there we go. Yes. Very important role then. Maybe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, we're sitting up on what was once the sports ground, am I right? Yes, this land was originally owned by the Courtauld family, who gifted it to Duncton in 1922. Uh, and was then a sports pavilion, a, sp a sports pavilion was here and it was a playing field. Um, in 1952, the land was then put in trust to the parish council. Uh, we are custodial trustees of the land. Uh, and that was uh, then, and then the uh, hall was built in about nine, in 2000. So the original village hall was down off, off the high street uh, and that was becoming small and uh, um, I think not fit for purpose and so it was decided to move the village hall here uh, and then it's run, it's now a charity, the village hall is run under a charity uh, and the, it's, uh, the parish council have no involvement in the day-to-day -day running of it uh, but we, we are the custodial trustees of the land and the hall. So what sort of activities go on here? Uh, it's a very social activity, various social activities, um, including uh, well, there's painting going on today, it's painting class, uh, things like Pilates, uh, keep fit classes. Uh, it's also used for events for the, for the parish, uh, people have their parties here, um, various uh, like um, fates and uh, uh, teas, uh, it was a, a, a plant sale, that sort of thing. Uh, but the income, uh, well, the, the village hall is self-funding, so it has to generate its own income. Yeah. So one of the reasons, one of the things we can do is relent it out for weddings. Uh, so it's become fairly popular for as a wedding venue. It's a real focal part of the of the village community. Yes. Yes. yes where yes. you can bring everybody together. I mean, and, and I think Duncton is very unique for that. You've still mm. got you've got two churches here. Yes. You've got your pub. Yes. And you've got your village hall. Yes. And so yes. many villages are losing all those things. So it's uh, it's very uh, encouraging to see that in a thriving community you've still got all these amenities. We are very lucky to have such a, a, a nice hall, well-equipped hall, and such nice uh, grounds as well. Well, my thanks there to John Robbins and Peter Thomas for joining me today. I think it's brilliant that Duncton has those very important community centres, the two churches, the village hall, and of course the pub. In the next time, we're going to go and have a look at the mill ponds. There's three of them in Duncton, so do join me on that one. In the meantime, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, become a patron and support what we do. And I'll see you when I'm next back in Duncton. Until then, goodbye.